My dog, what's going on, man? Yo, you know, I, I started off the show with your Fight the Power. <laughs> I know that's your favorite song of all time, your favorite hip-hop song. Yep. No doubt. I mean, Public Enemy, no doubt. Absolutely. Especially yeah. coming up in the 80s and what have you. I mean, that, that, that song was everything to me because I knew the battles, the wars that I was willing to engage in and trying to you know, basically provoke my ascension to, in corporate America. I mean, I was still, I was getting ready to go to college, went to Thomas Edison in Queens. After that, went to FIT in the city for a year or two. And then I went to um, Winston-Salem State. So I knew what kind of battles I was going to have to endure. And, you know, that to me, that was all about black power. That's what it was all about. I was well, it's I, always I, about. Shout out DJ Eric B. Eric B and Rakim. Eric no B's doubt. on the check-in. No Everybody loves you. Stephen no A. Smith. Thing. Uh, I watched a, a documentary you probably don't know nothing about uh, last night on Netflix. And it was about this astrologer, you know, in Spanish TV. There was this man named Walter McCarter. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother, my mother, there wasn't a night they won't see him. And this guy was like, you know, transcending. Uh, but he was on every night. 120 million people watched him every night. Wow. And at the end of the day, uh, he got did wrong by one of these fake so-called managers that act like they care about you. Yep. And he signed over his name, his likeness, anything he did. So he still tried to do TV, but he never received the check because they kept sending it to the manager. Right. So he eventually had to go away, even though his fan base was 120 million people a night. Right. Now, I'm not into astronomy or nothing like that. But I'm sure you being in this business for for so many years, almost 30 years, I think. Right. Um, how many athletes have you seen getting taken advantage uh, more than so -called? I, more, I, I'll, I'll say this. More than I can count, but believe it or not, not really much since Jordan. What I mean by that is once Jordan became that iconic businessman, that global iconic figure. Then you got to remember, you transitioned from the Jordan era to Shaq and Kobe. And people don't, first of all, Kobe, God rest his soul, was a brilliant brother. Spoke five different languages, at least three fluently. He used to speak, you know, Italian, Spanish, uh, English, of course, German. He was mastering that, trying to learn Mandarin as well. He was a brilliant brother and, 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 and was always a few steps ahead. But then you also had somebody like Shaq, who was a marketing genius and really, really insulated himself with a lot of the right people. And you had so many people that had so much love for him that wanted to help Shaq. So not only did they help Shaq make money, but they showed him how to make money and how to decipher who to trust and who not to trust. And Shaq is one of the most, and you know this just as well because you know so many athletes, Joe. I mean, Shaq is one of those cats that he's so giving that a lot of times he's willing to, you know, just drop that knowledge on a lot of other cats on the come up to let them know what to watch out for, what mind feels to avoid, et cetera, et cetera. So then you got Shaq and Kobe. And then, you know, from there, it just took off. The LeBron James of the world came in the fold. You know, Melo, people don't give Melo a lot of credit for being an astute businessman, doing some things. You look at D-Wade and some of the things that he's done in the world, the business, and on and on and on. And I think that when you look at today's, the modern-day athlete, it's not just about them insulating themselves and surrounding themselves with somebody they trust or people they trust. They really go about the business of educating themselves and then extending that knowledge to a lot of cats on a come up. So you don't make those mistakes. They're more protective of each other on the business side than cats were in the older days. You know, with, with rappers, with athletes, we always have something called survivor's guilt to yep. where most of us, we come, we come from the hood and we grow up and when somebody gets drafted, the whole hood says, we made it. Yeah. We made it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the whole entire family becomes like an anchor, like an yeah. anchor of a boat yeah. on these guys. And you ask everybody what they, the whole family does, they all say they work for that athlete. Right. Um, I'm sure you've seen this. Well, 
you not only see it, you know, you you experience it to some degree. I mean, listen, man, um, I've been very fortunate and blessed to make more money than I ever thought I'd make in my life. You know, we all know that about me right now in terms of what I'm doing and make no mistake about it. You know, you got friends that, you know, you didn't know you had or or friends that been your friends. And then all of a sudden they feel you owe them or family members that suddenly need when they didn't need before and all of that. And, and according to your salary, they need more. That's right. right. Like, exactly. They're not asking for a couple of hundred dollars. That's right. These guys That's want right. G money. And by the way, it's need. Like, oh my God, if I don't get this, I'm gonna die. You know, where before you yesterday you were fine. Today you're gonna drop dead if you don't get it. You know, Ooh. so it's all of that. I mean, I'm fortunate and blessed to have a great family. I'm at my sister's house now as we speak in Queens. And you know, you got you got stuff like that going on. But I mean, I just imagine what the players have to go through. And I really don't have to imagine because a lot of them have told me over the years. And it's 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 you know, you can again can relate to this because you've been big time in the game for so long you know you've experienced your level of success we all know that and what happens is this on one hand you do have those people those are hanger-ons but the hard part is that they were there for you when you had nothing so you feel somewhat compelled to like pull them up with you because you know you wouldn't have got to where you are mm -hmm. if it were not for them but this in the crevices of your mind you still feel there's a limit. There's supposed to be a limit. Yeah, it's a limit. It can't be, oh, you a millionaire, so I'm a millionaire. It can't be like that. But in the same breath, you can't abandon them either. So it's really yeah. not about needing to give or wanting to give. It's about knowing when's enough is enough. And that's usually the hardest thing in the world to kind of figure out because it's actually Man, It is. It is hard. harder to say enough. Yeah. It is hard. And, uh, and so, Stephen A., you made uh, you know, when don't you make headlines? But recently you made headlines with the Washington Redskins, the fact yep. that they changed their name. Can you allude to what you what you was trying to uh, break down to the people? Well, I, I first things first, I had to give Max Kellerman credit because he had been beating that drum for years. Oh, he yeah. He refused to call them the Redskins. He called them the team in Washington. He, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I felt adamant about it as well, but in the same breath, I'm not Native American. And so if you ran across Native Americans who did not consider it the name Redskins a racial slur, and then there were some who did, then my attitude was, well, then as a community, you got to come together. Now, I'm going to support you as a community. Whatever you decide is offensive to you is good enough for me. But what it can't be is where it appeared to be divided, which was the kind of information the owner of the Redskins, Daniel Snyder, and his groups, his support group, was kind of, was kind of given the public. But the thing about it is, is that, again, the word Redskins is considered a racial slur. And my mentality has always been very, very simple. I don't get to define for somebody else what's offensive to them. If the Hispanic community say, yo, Stephen A., Esteban, this shit is offensive. That's all I need to hear. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't need anything else. The problem is that when you got one Hispanic person standing next to another and they're on opposite sides of the fence. Or the one Native American standing on the opposite side of another. they on the opposite sides of the fence. Those kind of things make it difficult. But in the end, if it's offensive, it's offensive. And Daniel Snyder should have been got rid of the name. In the 87-year history, that was they were all uh, the, the founder for the, for the team. Uh, George Preston Marshall was, was considered racist. Um, Daniel Snyder swore up and down. I will never change the name in 2013. And so now that he changed it, everybody's jumping on them and saying, it took you long enough. You should have been took it. It was always offensive, blah, blah, blah. My position was, well, wait a minute. Money talks, bullshit walks. The fact of the matter, he thought it was going to drastically and negatively affect his bottom line. That doesn't affect him, but let's not let off the hook all of those people who suddenly stepped up in the aftermath of George Floyd's killing, and they said, okay, we're not going to do business with you. These groups, uh, these shareholders and stuff that reached out to FedEx, PepsiCo, Nike, and said, we encourage y'all not to do business with Daniel Snyder until he changes the name. Well, what the hell took you so long? It's 2020. How come you didn't do that in 2013? How come you didn't do that in 2014? And, and so on and so forth. Just like we want to call him out as the owner of the Redskins for not changing his name and not being sensitive enough, I'm sick and tired of other cats getting a pass for not doing anything either. Because what they're doing today to make him change the name, uh, a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, they didn't do it. 
Yeah, and I agree with that. And I also hate whenever they, they give out a an award that's been around for 100 years and they yeah. say the first black person to win this, the first Latino. I'm like, yo, why why you had to wait 100 years? That's true. Like, that's true. And, 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 and I also a, seen you it's talking an, about are there prejudices because we wouldn't have to be identified as a different group if you had treated everybody fairly from Jump Street. But in America, that's never been the case. That's our reality. Yeah, this is crazy, right? And I also seen you comment about the Black Lives Matter, I'm painting it and all that. Why, why, did, why you feel that way? You felt like that's, like, it, it, it really doesn't matter to put Black Lives Matter on the floor. Well, like, there's a couple of things. To? I appreciate you asking me that question. Here's the deal. Black Lives Matter, a lot of times people look at the group and they use that as an excuse to veer away from the purpose of the organization or itself or the movement. See, I, when I think about Black Lives, Matter, Black Lives Matter, I don't think about an organization. I think about a movement. I think about a movement of heightening America's awareness, recognizing the racial oppression and inequality, uh, the absence of civil rights, the brutality on the part of some police officers, all of that stuff entwined with one another in a movement towards eradicating that kind of nonsense. So to me, it's not about the organization because when it's about the organization, okay, then what is the organization? Who's the leader of the organization? You got white folks out there saying that some two of them are admitted Marxists that want to take down capitalism and want this to be a communist nation and all of that stuff. Well, guess what? When you describe it as a movement as opposed to an organization, it's far more difficult to stop a movement than it is to stop an organization. And that's why I go that way. A problem with that per se. What I have a problem with, Joe, is the constant symbolic gestures. Act absolutely every community that wants something from our government basically holds them hostage. You don't do this for us. You ain't, we ain't. On too many occasions when it pertains to the black community, we engage in symbolic gestures. Roger Goodell suddenly might be willing to take a knee. He's willing to apologize and say, we listening now and all this other stuff. I'm like, all right, fine. Well, guess what? How about taking Roger Goodell and some of these white owners on Capitol Hill and saying, excuse me, Police officers shooting unarmed black men should be labeled a federal hate crime. How about challenging those businesses that are patronized by the African-American community and say, yo, this is what we do for y'all. That's why y'all got multi-billion dollar establishments. How about returning the favor by doing business with us, creating internships, apprenticeships, job opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. Why can't we do stuff like that? Anybody can sit up there and tell me you sorry. Somebody can sit up there. They might, they, might, they might slap you. You might knock them the hell out, all right? They can apologize all day. But what is it that they're really, really doing for you other than giving you words and lip service? So that's what I was speaking about. You painting stuff in the streets and all of that stuff, that's nice. But that's a symbolic gesture. We beyond that. We've seen plenty of symbolic gestures. We want action. Over we want years. action. Enough you know, years action. ago, maybe two, three years back, I don't know, I, you know, uh, I had watched you and, and you was talking about Kaepernick and yep. we all love Kaepernick because he took the knee, police brutality, what he did. But I heard you say, like, you know, Cap, he took a check from the NFL. Could you, could you break down um, what does that mean? Like, what, okay. what does that mean? To well, I, elabor I elaborated more than that, and I'm happy to do it again because my position hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. Any black person on this planet should be thankful for, to Kaepernick for taking that knee, to bring in attention to racial oppression, racial inequality, police brutality, and all of that. As a black man, of course I feel that way. But what I was mm -hmm. saying was, okay, but you want to go back in the NFL. You have filed the suit against them. You filed a grievance against them. You are basically suing them. You're talking about collusion that's taking place to keep you out of this league. You want to be back in the league. Okay, so you took your position. They reacted predictably so. And now you say you want to get back. So guess what? How many people sue somebody and then go and get a job back from them? It usually doesn't work that way. That's number one. Number two, when they still felt the pressure because everybody was going at my man Jay-Z 
basically accusing him of selling out and stuff like that because he had agreed to do business with the NFL. I said, can we wait and see? Brother from Mars Projects. Mm -hmm. Projects. I mean, what, what are we talking about here? Or you loving mm -hmm. this music, he a real brother, and suddenly he doing business with the NFL, and all of a sudden, years and years of work get eradicated, and you go, why don't you find out what he's going to do? Come to find out. Jay-Z, Rock Nation, working behind the scenes, doing business with the NFL. Jay-Z's in a meeting with the NFL owners. They're like, we don't need Kaepernick. We got black quarterbacks that are stars in this league. We got Russell Wilson. We got Deshaun Watson. We got Patrick Mahomes. We got Cam. We got all of them. We don't need him. Lamar Jackson as well. We don't need him. And Jay-Z was like, oh, yeah, the hell we do. You ain't going to just turn your back on it like that. I can't do business with y'all if y'all going to just let him go like that. Nah. So we, we need to give him a fair tryout. That's what Kaepernick and them said they want, and this camp said they want it. So what does Jay-Z, Rock Nation, and others in the NFL and others, what, what were they doing? They arranged for a workout to take place. Personnel from 26 different teams showed up, and this brother didn't show up. And let me, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, Stephen yeah. A. Because I'm not, my IQ ain't ill in, in football like it is in basketball. Sure. Was Kaepernick at the time, uh, was he at his prime nope. when, when he was taking nope. the knee? No, 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 no. He was at his prime when he took them to the Super Bowl. And the year after, when he wreaked havoc against Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay in the postseason. At this particular moment in time, he had, low, he had gotten injured. Blaine Gabbard became the starting quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. And even though Kaepernick came back and started, once he got healthy, he was like 1 in 10 because Chip Kelly, the now coach at UCLA, who used to be the coach of the Philadelphia Eagles before he went to San Francisco, was the coach, and he was messing up everything for Cap. But what I'm saying to you is this. All I tried to say is, number one, you reach the settlement with the NFL. And if you reach a settlement with the NFL, you just like with any employer, if you reach a settlement, you usually don't get your job back. So mm. which one was it? It's not, I'm not and, saying and, it was and, right. And I'm so, saying that's not how it works. So if he wasn't in his prime, you're saying, then it's been like three, four years, and we're talking about a tryout. Do you think he, do you think he's in physical condition to get a job oh, in the NFL yes, right now? Absolutely. I think that Kaepernick could be on an NFL team right now, even though he's been out of the league for, for, for three, four years now, four years. But I would remind you, for example, it's 2020, Joe. Just a couple of months ago, a few weeks ago, I'm sorry, a former league MVP named Cam Newton mm. signed with the New England Patriots with Dak Prescott getting 31 million, with Carson Wentz getting 32 million, with Russell Wilson getting 35 million, with old Phillip Rivers getting 25 million, Tom Brady, a two year, $50 million deal. Cam Newton signed with the New England Patriots for a half a million dollars. Wow. A half a million. Now, mind you, he's coming off of an injury, and I understand that. But a half million dollars. Half a million dollars ain't no money for no That's Cam. And, and the thing is, I'm saying, I watched a lot of reviews saying that he's going to be an incredible addition. He, they say they think he'll take him to the playoffs. I, without question. Without question. For a half a million dollars? A half a million dollars. Now, mind you, it's incentive laden, so he can earn as much as seven and a half million dollars if he meets those incentives. But the only portion that's guaranteed is five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So all I'm trying to say to you to make that point, if they did that to Cam, although because he was injured, what you looking to do for a brother that been out of the league since 2016? Oh, you want to say try out, try out, oh. show me what you got. That's not a crime. If you ready, you ready. Listen, he probably make more money off the court. With Nike, you think? <laughs> Hell yeah. Listen, Hell yeah. Listen, Stephen A, now that you bring up these salaries, Patrick Mahone. Now, he's the best quarterback in the game. Without question. Without question. Uh, he's cold as ice. Yep. He's. When I seen him go neck to neck, because because I don't know football like that, but whenever I watch my favorite bandwagon is Tom Brady because I, I I look at the game, the Super Bowl, and I say, when he's down with a minute and a half left, I sit back and I go, now what would Jordan do right now? Because 
They call him the, the, the Jordan, the MJ of football. And sure enough, he comes back and he wins every time. When I seen Patrick Mahomes go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him that year and lose, I told all my football guys, Rich Flay's on the check. I said, this boy cold as ice. He's the truth. He coming back and showing up, he came back and won the chip. Uh, a half a billion dollars. Well, that's, that, that, it sounds good. Here's the deal. It's a 10-year deal worth over half a billion dollars. But he's only guaranteed $141 million. 140, yep. Every, everything else is incentives. Now, let's say, for example, they're saying, he should net about a hundred and he should gross about a hundred and forty million because that's one of the things that we're gonna speak real cash money. Let's be real about this. There's mm -hmm. a difference between gross and net. What you yeah. gross is before Uncle Sam take your dollars. What that's you net is after. Let me tell you something right now. That matters, okay? So here's the deal. He gonna get about a hundred and forty million dollars. Let's say it's over the next six years before he's in a position to renegotiate his deal that he just agreed to. That's still less. Than thirty million a year. Wow! So that means Dak Prescott, Carson Wentz, Aaron Rodgers, Ben Roethlisberger, oh, Russell Wilson, and all it, Jared Goff. That means it is at least. Uh, uh, I mean, even Matt Ryan making thirty million. So you got about eight, nine, ten dudes that making more than the greatest of all time. But, right? But now. here's but here's where the comparison to Jordan is apropos. Let me drop this on you. Do you know? that for the first 11 years of Michael Jordan's career, he averaged $4 billion in salary? Four. Mm -hmm. See, that $30 million that he got, and then $33 million in his final year, or 33 and 30 million, whatever it was, that was at the end, the last two years of his career. But the first 11 years of Jordan's career, he averaged $4 million a year in salary. Chicago was horrible. We saw so, what they did with no, no, no. Pippen. Yeah, yeah but listen. It was horrible. That's, but that's why Jordan got on Pippen with the last dance because Pippen was making 2.8 and Jordan was like, hold on. As a basketball player, I was only making four. Now that last year when my contract was up, I made over 30. But remember, all those years I was under contract, I was making what you were making. So what you bitching for? That's basically what Jordan was saying. Let me explain something to you about these Dallas Cowboy quarterbacks are overhyped. They've always been. Dak Prescott, he's like a model to me. He's like good for commercials, good for public appearance. I don't believe he got what it takes to win a Super Bowl. What do you think, Stephen A.? Well, first of all, I'm allergic to rooting for the Dallas Cowboys because I can't stand Cowboy fans. They make me sick. They're the most disgusting. Shout out my brother, Rich, play to God. And how I feel about Cowboy fans. I can't stand them. I wish them all an awful Thanksgiving and a horrible Christmas. But let's be clear. Let's be clear. Um, when you're talking about Dak, Dak can ball, man. He's not a scrub. The question is, when you talk about a Super Bowl, here's the problem. To get through the NFC, you got to get through Rodgers. You got to get through Russell Wilson. You got to get through Carson Wentz. Who knows what Jared Goff or even Jimmy Garoppolo is going to do or Matt Ryan because they still got Julio Jones and, 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 and Ridley and those boys, so we don't know. And then if you get to the AFC, the likelihood is that you're going to run into Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson. So when you look at – or Cam, because Bill Belichick know what he's doing in New England. So you got all of that going on. I'm not going to rule out my Steelers either, even though I know that's a distant four. In the end, what it comes down to is this. The Cowboys were losing before Dak Prescott ever got there. So why the hell blame him for them not winning that? I mean, you ain't won a Super Bowl since 1995. Uh, I mean, damn. Dak Prescott just got yeah, there. But you know, Dak, Dak Prescott, he want, he want money. He wanted but he all, deserved he to act like he the biggest in the game. No, but he not going to get that. But the, but the real issue with him is that the Cowboys want to lock him up for five years. He wants out after four years because he knows how the money is being generated and he don't want to be locked in for an additional year having to play under the conditions they set. He wants to get out as soon as possible. So it's really not just about the money per se. It's about him wanting his freedom to do what he wants to do earlier than they want him to have that freedom. That's, that's a smart play, especially yes. in football because your, your expectancy 
isn't as long as other sports. Yes. Let's go. Let's go into this bubble. I'm hearing too much about players snitching. There's a snitch hotline to <laughs> say if anybody's walking out the hotel, anybody. Right. Yo, Stephen A., who's the snitch? Who's calling I, on the – who do you think? A couple, couple of things. Number one, I don't know. Number two, even if I did know, you know the code. We don't tell. We would never, we would never reveal that, all right? I wouldn't say who it is, but I will tell you this. If there was ever a license to snitch, it's now, because here's the reason why. You got COVID, you could contaminate us. Now, if it's just on you and it don't affect us health-wise or our money, then that would be different. In this case, COVID affects both. Because understand why they playing, Joe. What The reason why I spoke out against Kyrie Irving and Dwight Howard when they said, we ain't down for playing, we want to focus on social justice issues. Mm -hmm. It was about the money, and I explained this. If they had, if the, if the league, if the players had elected not to play, the NBA would have had to cancel the season. Once they canceled the season, Joe, the owners would have the right to rip up the collective bargaining agreement. That means Ooh. Russell Westbrook's $217 million, null and void. Steph Curry's $207 million, null and void. LeBron's four years, $153 million, null and void. Uh, 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 Kyrie Irving's four years, $140 million, null and void. You rip up you the You know, I love, I love Kyrie. Start it over. You know, the you fact that he's hurt and he wasn't even going to play, I don't right. know if that was... It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. But, but listen to what I'm saying. It renders the agreement null and void. Then they got to go back to the negotiating table. They probably would have to give back about $4 billion. And on top of it all, the owners were going to institute a hard salary cap like they got in the NFL. So what I said to the players were, tell me one movement involving black people in the history of this country that did not involve economic empowerment. Here you are, brothers, making millions. Why would you give that up? Which is why Chris Paul, LeBron James, and others never even considered it because they knew better. That is a fact, man. And I think you could do more by getting your money. That's right. And, and, and donating to the causes. That's I mean, right. Like, the fact of not playing and not paying your bills. And let me tell you something. Some of these guys, Kyrie Irving, he's worth maybe two hundred million or whatever. Right. But uh, some of these guys, you know, are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Everybody ain't. Everybody hear, ain't uh, rich like that. Fat Joe, did you hear what I proposed on first take the other day involving these players? No, I said, break it down to me. I, oh, I yeah, said, about the pack. Let, that's that, right. That I, amazing. I said, y'all want to really, really make a difference? I said, there's 450-plus players in the NBA. You don't even need it. I said, the top 20 paid play, the top 20 highest paid players in the NBA, every year, out of your 25, 30-plus million per year, you donate $100,000, a pack, political action committee. We'll call it the black pack. Guess what? Mm -hmm. We want to talk about black issues. We pour $100,000 into this pot, and we get make sure we got our own lobbyists. And you march up on Capitol Hill of those politicians. Look, we'll support your campaign. We'll support your causes. Here's what we want and what we need. You do that for us. Guess what? We down. You don't. And this is the type. And this is the type of things that we need to take it to. Rather right. than, I love that they paint the Rather than symbolic gestures. Group, but we need action. We need to do stuff like this. Packs and, 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 and taking it down there. And because everybody else, the only way to do it is everybody sticking together. Right. Everybody, uh, you know, T.I. the other day came on here. And I don't want to talk about it too much because... Right. He talked about it, and it, and they, they didn't let me post it up for some reason, IG. But he was talking about reparations and getting, you know, people who funded slave owners, mm -hmm. who still got money and still in business, getting them to pay some reparations. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very intelligent. But we need people like the PAC mm -hmm. to represent us in those negotiations. Well, let me be very clear. I'm not just talking fifty to hundred thousand dollars a year. They want to get it. I'll put my money there. You understand? They want me to play. If the players wanted me to play a leadership role, I'll do that. You know what? I'm down for it because we're not talking politics. I'll put my money there too, Steve. I'll put my money there. I ain't gotta ask. I know you would. It's like yeah, this. I'll put my money it's, there. 
it's not even, a, and it's not about politics. It's about real life issues that's all need to be willing to address. That's the most important thing. So now that we're doing that, we can talk about that. When T.I. brings that up, understand what may have been a motivation behind it. The great, great author, ta Copes, was being interviewed. And he talked about how if you take into account black dollars and what have you, what you would ultimately witness is about $17 trillion in reparations that are owed to black people in America. That's what he said. He said what ta Coates was saying is, listen, we don't want to bring up reparations or what have you, but what choice do we have? If y'all don't want to do it, then pay up. If you don't want to do the right things, then pay up. And if you don't want to pay up, then do the right thing. And that's where I think T.I.'s <laughs> kind of motivation or kind of thinking may have came. No, I, 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 I like the concept. I, I, I support him a million percent. Yeah. Now let's talk about something we both love, but we don't like talking about it in the last 20 years. Sure. It's the Knicks. <laughs> Y'all see, World Wide West. Yeah. My brother, World Wide West. Yeah. What, can he do something with the Knicks? Um, yes, because you can't do any worse than what's been transpiring over the last 20 years. So let's, let's call it what it is. The New York Knicks suck. They've sucked for a long time. Uh, we know how awful they have been. Uh, but this is a step in the right direction. Leon Rose is connected to his share of athletes, and he certainly knows the business of basketball. Ooh. And I challenge anybody to show me a more connected person than World Wide West. Now, you might have people who don't like him or whatever. I love him. I know you I love West. You know, I know a lot of people that love him. Wes, is, that's, that's my man. Uh, so we wish him nothing but the best. He knows basketball. He's connected to the game. And more importantly, he's got a better chance than anybody they've had in the New York Knicks organization mm -hmm. of actually recruiting players to it. Now, whether he pulls that off or not remains to be seen, which might be one of the reasons why he and Leon Rose talk a lot about culture, because they don't want anybody to think it's a quick fix. It's going to take some time. And there's a level of latitude that they want to give, they want to receive. And I understand that. But in the end, what it comes down to is you got to get ballers. A Devin Booker's out there, you got to get him. And Anthony Davis is going to be available potentially in free agency. You got to get somebody like that. A call Anthony Towns. You know they, they, you know somebody they. like Got to improve the talent on the Knicks roster. Give us somebody to care for. How about that? Because I, I ain't going to lie to you. I, 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 love, I love seeing Wes giving him a pound and a hug. You understand? But he ain't going to get me off my chair pumping my fist because he ain't dunking or shooting a jack. I need somebody to root for. And damn it, the you, New York Knicks haven't given me that in a long time. You know, LeBron said that his first choice in 2010 was the New York Knicks, but he, he was went lying. there and they stunk it up. He was lying. It was not true. He Remember, I broke the story. Who broke the story? I broke that story. I don't give a damn what they tell you. I'm telling you that LeBron, Bosch, and Wade had made that decision months in advance. Now, LeBron procrastinated and waited until the announcement actually came down, and they all put forth these beautiful jobs on television, looking surprised and shocked, and, oh, my God, I'm touched. And, oh, LeBron was going to South Beach, bro. LeBron was going to South Beach. That's and, crazy because that's the way I had spoke to Wes recently, and he said that was a lie. He was like, no, nah, that's a lie. Yeah. I said, I'm telling you it was. Uh, Anthony Davis. There's also yep. a rumor that he wanted to come to the Knicks and the Knicks wouldn't give away R.J. Barrett. No, that wasn't it. What happened is, is that, you know, um, he wouldn't – listen, Anthony Davis never agreed to a contract extension. His rep is Rich Paul. Rich Paul don't mind him being in L.A. with LeBron trying to win this chip. Uh, but once you put in your time – uh, you want to leave all your options over to get the maximum amount of dollars you can acquire and uh, manipulate the situation to the best of your ability. Remember, LeBron is 35. He's in his 17th year in the league. Anthony Davis got at least another six, seven years as a top-level player in this game. So if he wins a championship in L.A. with LeBron, he might want to stay or he might want to go and establish his own thing. And that's what you got to think about here. The only reason why a lot of cats weren't willing to come before is because Dolan's a problem. That's why Wes and Leon Rose and those guys go out of their way to remind folks, this is our franchise. And to their credit, they're right. Because Dolan does leave you alone to do the job. 
he hired you to you know, do it's it. No, it's the average. What, what I try to tell these people when they give me two minutes of their time is I try to tell them, listen, bro, the team don't belong to, to Dolan. It belongs to the ambulance driver. It belongs to the security guard. It belongs to the nine to five person who bleeds blue and orange. It doesn't belong to the elite or what they say. It's the people. Now, now the team has to reflect the passion of the people because any, any group of people that's able to keep supporting a team that hasn't won in 20 years, bro, you got the loyalty of the fans. We finally, like you yeah, said, want to root for somebody. Right. But you know this. You can't throw out a little kid and ban him from the garden because he's saying trade to sell a team. You can't have Charles Oakley removed by security. Charles Oakley, you can't do stuff like that. Horrible, there's a, man. There's a level of, you know what I'm saying? All of that stuff, you just can't do that stuff. And I so, went, and I went, and I'm going to tell you, I went on my knees, yeah. and I was sweating bullets, yeah. and I dove on the floor. And this is a true story. Yeah. Dove on the floor, crawled on the floor, yeah. begged, sweat bullets. I was begging Kyrie and Rock Nation to the point of Jay-Z had to tell me, Joe, stop. Like, yes. you, you're doing too much for him to come to the Knicks. And the man turned around and he was like, you saw what they did to Charles Oakley? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, and Absolutely. I looked at him and I was like, yeah, but it's, what could you do? Right? So we're hoping, Wes... Uh, I know he will. I know he'll do better than everybody who's been in the past doing their thing. I believe in what. Let me ask I, you something. What I, basketball team right now in this bubble is the sleeper to you? I would tell you, well, I don't think Houston's much of a sleeper because Harden and Russell Westbrook, even though we go, our prayers are with Russell Westbrook that he returns healthy because he got the coronavirus. He got I the know, coronavirus. God bless him. So we got God bless him and hope he gets back healthy. But I can't underestimate what they could bring to the table. But if I wanted to use the word sleeper. 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 I would tell you I'm big on the Miami Heat, bro. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. I live in Miami. They're not going to let me go out the house. Let me, let let me tell you why. They don't do that because I'm telling you. All these Miami you. guys is in here. You're killing me right no, now. Let me tell you what happened. Listen, I love the fact that the Sixers just moved Ben Simmons to the four and got this cat shake Milton that's going to be that point guard because he could got the ball out of uh, Ben Simmons' he, hands. He could, he, could do the, he could do some things. And I know Philly, but I don't think Philly's depth is there and I don't think their coaching is there. Let me tell you something about Miami. Jimmy Butler is a leader and he's a warrior. This kid, uh, this, this kid, this, listen, man, Bam out of bio, he's no joke. They but I What's love the white boy with the gun? Let's, 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 Tyler, I love the trio. My daughter, Tyler. And Robinson. She's a Heat fan. Listen, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero. These two white brothers pull up from the parking lot. Oh, no. They don't give They have no conscience. That, nah, no conscience. Okay, no nah, conscience. Nah, they ain't got no conscience. And, and then no. that kid, Kendrick Nunn, can play too. Yes, he can. I would strongly advise everyone not to sleep on Miami. That's the sleeper. Miami Heat. Okay. Can't, now I, I give you my the, sleeper. I give you my sleeper. Yeah. But and and, and I'm conflicted. Okay. But I'm gonna give you my sleeper. I think the Dallas Mavericks is the sleeper. No, I'm not so. I'm not so. You're not sold on on, on Luca. Luca's a bad boy. Zingas, Look, I think they can hurt. Hardaway Jr. I think they. I think they compromise Porzingis when they get physical with him. That's my problem with Dallas. I think Dallas is a player away. I think they need another one. But I like Porzingis. I love Luka. He's a dog. I love Luka. But as Porzingis, even though he's legit, I still think he's a couple of years away from that superstar status. Now, right now, who you want to see in the playoff playing LeBron? Is it John Moran or is it Zion? No, I, well, well, I, I would tell you Zion because I think Zion and New Orleans have a better team. We could we get we forget a former Laker named Brandon Ingram averaged twenty four when the oh, season. He's going crazy. All right, we forget that Drew Holiday shut down Dame and those boys to some degree. He had some help double teaming stuff like that. But Drew Holiday is a gamer. Um, when you look at New Orleans, no, they got a I, mean team. That they got a mean team. They so got, I would like that. But but I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I waited this from opening night. I've been waiting to see LeBron versus Kawhi 
in a conference championship with a birth to the finals on the line. That's what I'm. You back, you back, you back pedaling, man. You backtracking. You, 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 you said it was the Lakers. Now, now you said Rondo got hurt. You, yeah. you, you don't know it might. Uh, look well, like Avery the Bradley, yeah, Avery Bradley didn't play because his son has a respiratory illness, he don't show up. Then Rondo is out for six to eight weeks because of the thumb. And then that puts LeBron having to handle the ball and play it in 17 years in the league, age 35. Now, he got his rest. But I'm just saying, you got all of that going he's, he's, on. He's, he's, he's my favorite player in the NBA, so I, I can say it. Uh, Steph is mine. He's a step slower. I watched a couple of games in person this year before the COVID. He's a step slower. LeBron James is a step slower. Yeah, but and I've been watching months, him my whole life. Now, now he's had four months off. Yeah, yeah. And he four takes months. care of himself. He That's takes right. care of himself. That's right. But let me tell you, the moves that Clippers have made this year, when Good. they got the Morris brother, yep. they got my man from Detroit. Now, it's just Well, remember, much. the Lakers got the other Morris brother. Got that. Mm. That's right. They got one too. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm being that my Knicks ain't in contention. I'm yep. a, Le, I'm, I'm a LeBron James bandwagoner. But I will tell you one thing. He got a problem with the Clippers, man. He got a, there's a real that, problem. I know that. But in the game of basketball, the Clippers are great. They're deep. They're exceptionally well coached. But if you have two of the top five players on the planet, you should find a way to win. Jordan and Chicago didn't always have the best team, mm -hmm. but Utah didn't have Jordan. Seattle didn't have Jordan. Portland didn't have Jordan. Phoenix didn't have Jordan. The Lakers didn't have Jordan. You feel me? So what I'm saying to you is that the best team itself doesn't always overcome the best or the best two players in the world. If I'm LeBron, if I got LeBron and Anthony Davis, oh, yeah. I'm gonna put my money on it. Yeah, me too. I feel the even same though way. I think the Clippers are better and deeper, the Lakers should still can still overcome that. I, I, I didn't say it they would were the be best. A major team. disappointment if the Lakers don't pull it off. I'm gonna be honest with you because yeah. when you got Anthony Davis and you got LeBron, we finally been waiting for something like that because. I, I, I was, me being LeBron, my favorite player, I was dizzy watching what Golden State was doing to this man. And it was him against five. Well, you can say that. And I get where you're coming from, but they lost to Golden State one year when Kyrie was right there with him and Kevin Love. Remember that. Yeah, now, that's when KD Kyrie. arrived. Kyrie that's when KD busy. arrived. Kevin Love, I don't rate Okay, think. that's fine. But what I'm saying to you is Kyrie a bad brother, LeBron a bad brother. But what we don't appreciate and what we never appreciated enough about Golden State, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson are is the greatest shooting backcourt in the history of basketball. There is no backcourt. There is no backcourt duo in NBA history that has ever been as great as those guys. Ever. Shooter. Man. I'm talking about marksmen. I'm talking about snipers. Now, I don't Man, care what, let me tell you, me, me tell you this. Me, me, they will be in a conference. If they are healthy, they will be at least in the conference finals next year. Book it. Book next it. year. Not this yes. year. Not this summer. Next year. Next year. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, conference you know, finals. They got experience and everything. But now that you're talking best backcourt, I had a real good question for you. Pick your starting five the greatest basketball players of all time. Dead, alive, whatever. What's your five? For me personally, I'm going to go sort of compartmentalize it by position. I'm going to put together a team for you. I got Magic. I got MJ. I got mm. LeBron. Mm. Okay? I got, I, got, I got Tim Duncan. <laughs> I, got, I got Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Okay, now, now my five now, would be now, Allen Iverson. Nope. Instead of Magic. You know Allen Iverson is my brother. You know that. He's not yes. even in the conversation. He's I, not even in the conversation. I would have I would have Allen Iverson. I would have Cole. I would have LeBron. I would have Tim Duncan. I would have Shaquille O'Neal. 
Okay, let me tell you this. Are you ready for this? I, I can give you an unbeatable team that absolutely positively would never be beat. That's okay. what I'm trying to – what is okay. that team? Okay, that team. Now, I say the five best players. I'm saying this team, this collection of talent would never lose. I got MJ. I got Steph Curry. Mm. I got LeBron. I got mm. KD. Mm. And Shaq or Olajuwon, oh, yeah, whoever you want to get. Now, you got one. You went there with that one. That one, that one. Yeah. Because to have LeBron and KD, all right, to have LeBron have an ability to kick it out to Steph or KD, now that's to a have that's a dream MJ, for real. to have that's Michael a... Jordan, and that's then a... give me Shaq or Elijah one. Uh, uh, it, we, we can stop the presses. We can just stop the presses. We can just stop it. Elijah the... one, man, he, he, he was great, man. You understand, he, he, people don't realize this. People don't realize this. Footwork, everything. He was amazing. People don't realize this about Kevin Durant. You do understand that Kevin Durant. Oh, no, Kevin Durant one, is sick. One of the top ten players of all time. Do people realize that? Let me tell you something. Kevin Durant, you know I coached out there at the Rucker, right? Yeah. I'm the all-time leading coach. I got more chips than anybody. They call me right. the Bobby Knight out there. <laughs> Shout out to Mousy Tri-State. Let me tell you something. I seen every player you could name come out there. Every play. Kevin Durant went out there and scored like 80, 90 points. They almost beat him up. They had to rush him in the car because the players he was playing against were so mad at this guy. Like, all he was doing was taking the ball out. He was shooting from the other end. That day, when I seen what he did, I was like, this guy's one of the greatest of all time. And so like, I've never seen nobody do nothing like that. Kevin, this, is, this is what I try to tell people. First of all, Mad love and respect to Kobe, the late Kobe Bryant. We love him. We miss him. We know how great he was. But he did the same thing MJ did, just not quite as good as MJ. That's where Kobe gets lost from that top five. Having said all of that, this is what I want people to understand. Kevin Durant is 6'11", with a 7'6 wingspan, who Sick. can pull up from 35. He's unbelievable. They just need to understand that when Kevin Durant doesn't score 40, it's because he didn't prioritize doing it. You cannot stop him. You can't stop him. You, and he got a hand. He's going to shoot over everybody. Over everybody. There's nothing you can do. You're either too short or too slow. Period. You can't guard him. Yeah, yeah. He, he could literally me. say, Russell, Take the ball, shoot your 25 shots a game or whatever. Okay, you need me to close, give it to me. Let me, let me ask you one of the craziest questions yeah. uh, you've ever been asked in sports. If today, if we had an O.J. Simpson, an athlete mm -hmm. to be accused of a crime as crazy as O.J. Simpson, right. riding in the Cullinan on the highway, mm -hmm. stop the whole world, which athlete would that be? Not saying they would commit the crime, but if they committed the crime. Well, let me ask let's let's put let's put let's let's ask the question a safer way. Yeah. What athlete would draw that level of attention? That's what I'm asking. Easily LeBron. Um <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> NFL players, I mean, there's several NBA players that would do it. LeBron, Kyrie, um, you know. I got, I got, I got all Tom these Brady. I oh, got oh. Tom Brady. If Tom Brady did I was getting ready, I was getting ready to say that. Now, now, Yo, listen, if Tom Brady, if Tom Brady, Brady shit, now, that would be, be on the highway with the helicopters. Yo, it would be worse than LeBron. <laughs> it would be worse than LeBron. I mean, it would be insane. We know that's thing. not happening. God bless you. It, 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 no. I was thinking about Again, we're not, saying, we're not, we're not, we're not trying to the question isn't about whether or not they would do something like that. The question is who would draw that kind who of would attention? Garner that? Who would stop who would every news channel created? That's right. No question. That would be that Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I agree yeah, with you. listen, my brother, I don't want to put any more pressure on you because you've been so real tonight and you always are. But Forget that, Joe. 
your top five greatest rappers of all time, and then we'll end it on that. Well, first of all, I'm going to say Biggie and Tupac. Um, I'm definitely going to say Jay-Z. Um, wow. Nas, Eric B, Rakim, damn. I'm an LL fan, huge LL me fan. Me too, me too. Um, but now you're up to number six, man. Yeah, you, oh, I, and I It can't. was easier for you I to don't do want to leave Eminem out. I don't want to leave Eminem out because Eminem is on another level. <laughs> I mean, damn. Out of respect, I, I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say Nas and Eminem. Oh, that's a mean five. So you got Nas, Eminem, Jay-Z, Biggie, and Pac. That's like, yeah. Yeah. you know how to pick them, Steve. No Steve, doubt. we love you. I thank you for being so honest, man, and always showing love to everybody. We wake up every day to you. Um, it's an honor having you on the big, 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 big show. <laughs> this is the biggest thing smoking on IG. The competition is sick right now, Stephen A. Smith. They don't know how I get the $10 million man. They don't know how I pull this off, Stephen A. Smith. I thank my you man. for coming to the Fat Joe Show. You called? I came, my man. You know you're my brother. I love you. I appreciate oh, you. Thanks man. so much. Hi, right, Stephen A. Tell everybody make sure they watch First Take in the morning.